COVID-19 typically starts with a little bit of fatigue and fever in the first few hours, and then people start to develop additional symptoms, often a sore throat, a cough, and maybe some shortness of breath when walking upstairs or for a long distance. COVID-19 progresses differently for different people. In fact, probably about 80% of people will actually really think they just have a mild cold. They may or may not have the fever for two or three days. They'll have a little bit of a dry cough, a little bit of sore throat, maybe even get a little bit of diarrhea. But then it's usually gone by seven days. The people that are going to get really sick tends to be the older people, people with other chronic diseases, particularly heart disease and lung disease. It's unusual, but around the fifth or sixth day, they actually start to get a lot worse. So that's really the time we really worry. That usually means they're starting to develop increasing disease in their lungs. And as a consequence, they start to get really short of breath and have difficulty breathing. If you think you have COVID-19, there's probably no reason to call your doctor. Just continue to socially isolate from your family members, from your pets. If you start to have worries or you have questions specifically about what you should be doing, that's the time to call your doctor. If you are starting to get sicker, particularly on the fifth, sixth, or seventh day, anytime, if you're feeling like you're having increasing problems breathing, really short of breath, maybe you didn't have a fever and now you have a fever, those are reasons to call your doctor. And if it's really bad, it's even a reason to call 911 or go to the emergency room. If you're really short of breath and having chest pain, chest tightness, you could be having a heart attack, but you could also be having a more severe case of COVID-19. If you really feel like you couldn't drive yourself to the emergency room, you shouldn't. If you don't think someone else should be driving because you might get worse in the transport, you should call 911. In the United States right now, we still have a shortage of the swabs that you need to be tested for the virus that causes COVID-19. We now have a lot more tests available, but if we can't swab the person, we can't actually run the test. And so we're limiting the use of our swabs to just the sickest people, the people that are being hospitalized. We really want to know if they had COVID-19, if they're being hospitalized, because we can put them together with other people with COVID-19. So knowing a person who's really sick has COVID-19 is important. So because we have those limited swabs, we recommend that people who are just curious, we ask people not to get tested and not to ask to be tested. Once we have plenty of swabs to test everyone, then I think it would be prudent to go ahead and start testing a lot more people to get a better understanding of what's happening in our environment. The virus that causes COVID-19 can actually live on clothing surfaces for a short period of time. So when doing laundry of maybe someone who might have COVID-19, wear some gloves as you sort laundry and put them into the washing machine. Make sure that you wash things appropriately using the right detergent, and that will kill the COVID-19 virus. If you don't have gloves, go ahead and sort out the laundry like you normally would, but make sure you wash your hands after touching all the laundry. If you have to use a laundry room, either in your building or in a laundry room, Matt, that's okay as long as you don't have COVID-19. You should not be going out if you're sick. But if you're healthy and you can go to a laundromat, do that. But you have to keep the social distancing. Be thoughtful of your neighbors after doing your laundry. Look at the areas that might have been touched by dirty clothing and just wipe it down with alcohol wipe that's been approved for COVID-19 cleaning. If a person has been exposed exposed to COVID-19 but doesn't have symptoms, it's a good idea to consider wearing a mask for the next 14 days. And often when a person is starting to get sick or they're not sure they're sick, they actually could be very contagious. By wearing a mask after your own exposure or you think you might be sick but aren't certain, actually can reduce your risk of spreading the virus to someone else. So wearing a mask is helping you to protect others. If you are perfectly healthy and you want to go out in public, maybe you have to go to the grocery store, drugstore, doctors. Wearing a mask when you're healthy can be helpful. If you're out in the environment where you really can't control what other people do, and then suddenly if someone sneezes or coughs at you, your mouth and nose are potentially protected from that virus hitting your actual mucous membranes, your nose and your mouth because part of the way the virus is transmitted by coming in contact with your nose, your mouth, or your eyes. And the mask actually does cover your nose and mouth. So being out in public wearing a mask or a scarf over your face can protect you. What I'm afraid of though, is that a lot of times people come in contact 
with dirty surfaces, potentially infected surfaces, and they put their mask on without first washing their hands. You might actually be introducing the virus to your nose and mouth just simply by the way you're putting on your mask or taking your mask off. Also, often I see people who are wearing masks taking their hands and going underneath the mask because they have an itch or they have to readjust it. It's maybe giving you a false sense of security, but you're actually making it worse. Wearing a mask well can actually reduce your risk of infection. So if you're out in an environment which you can't control, it's a good idea to wear a mask. The vast majority of people are no longer contagious seven days after the start of their symptoms. So we have a couple different rules around this. If it's been seven days since your symptoms started and you've been fever free for at least 72 hours, you're probably not contagious anymore. So if you've been keeping distance from family members in your own home, that's when you can probably start to relax and not be quite as vigilant about social distancing and whether or not you're sharing utensils. Probably still should be careful, but you're no longer contagious. If you work in healthcare, you're a police officer, a fireman, or any of the essential workers, after seven days and being fever-free for 72 hours, you can go back to work. If you had a prolonged fever, maybe we had a fever up to five or six days, then that seven day rule doesn't count. It still has to be another 72 hours. So you might need to be out for eight, nine or 10 days.